Until I was actually fully awake, nobody could have known if I was like severely handicapped for the rest of my life. Because obviously I had like brain injuries and stuff. In more cases than not, it would happen. I got really, really lucky. My parents picked up golf as a family sport. They really wanted us to have something we can do all together. And my brother, who's four years older than me, absolutely loved it. So eventually I was outvoted. And just from the very beginning, I just got like dragged with them to the golf course and eventually obviously got into it. I was also like the only like, young girl my age that would be out there. So I was kind of bored and didn't really enjoy it that much. And I was selling golf balls instead of practicing. Um, and then at some point, my, my dad, who's a text counselor, he told me, um, that if I like don't tax my income, then I go to jail for fraud. <laughs> and and eventually it's like, oh, never mind, let me practice then. Because I was so much taller than all girls in my age, I like obviously hit the ball really far, like very early. Like I'm this height since I'm 12. I didn't really ever win much on like a bigger stage, but yeah, like I would start international competition somewhat like 2011, 2012. I was trying to put myself on the map for these international team competitions in 2013. Yeah, then I got into um, a bit of a predicament. <laughs> I got hit by a car uh, with 45 miles an hour, 70 kilometers an hour when I was out jogging in the morning before school. I was in a coma for a little bit and um, had some, yeah, pretty serious injuries that like miraculously recovered very well. Um, so I like woke up from the coma and I like, I don't know why, but I knew what happened to me, but I didn't have the memory of the event. I was never in pain because obviously they drugged me up. So for me, there was never really a reason why I wouldn't be able to just return. Everyone around me who thought I was gonna die, they were all like, golf's not important, like, please be safe. The first question I can remember is that I asked my dad if I was gonna be able to play the German girls which was like in my home club, like that yearly tournament was like my favorite tournament. And that was the first week of June. And my accident was the first week of May. And my dad's like, ah, you know what? Did we talk about this another time? I picked golf up really quickly after the accident again. And by the time like 2014 came around, I would say it probably was better than it like was before at the time and managed to win a German national championship. And then 2015, I won the German national, the German international, the German international girls, which then got me into the Junior Solheim Cup in my home club. But I played like the worst because <laughs> I put so much pressure on myself. The high schools um, that were surrounding, um, they gave the kids the day off to come out and watch me play. And it felt like thousands of people <laughs> walking with me like kids that have never been on the golf course before. I went to the University of Houston, which was a really cool experience. Um, the program was really new, the women's golf program. I really didn't want to turn professional at the time. <laughs> so I picked a degree that I would have like, actually wanted to work with. Um, so I decided to study biochemical and biophysical studies, which was definitely tricky to balance with uh, a competitive golf career, um, even just on an amateur level. Uh, but Houston was fantastic. They helped me so much. My coach was so understanding. He understood that for me, school was my number one priority and golf was just number two. So, and he completely accepted that. I was wonderful about it. Like the times I had to take like a later flight or have like a road trip another time or miss practices, whatever it was. And he was so understanding for it. But then by the time I graduated, I would have to apply for like an actual job. And I was like, damn, this is work. <laughs> this is the reality. Let me let me chicken out of that and just try and be a professional golfer for a while. You have to do so many chemistry prerequisites to actually get into biochemistry and I sucked at those. But then my biochemistry classes felt like relatively easy to me. I want to one day like go into cancer research. My own mom uh, unfortunately uh, had a really tough time um, with the disease and eventually lost her personal battle um, so I was very like passionate about that around the time when you decide what you want to do with your life I guess I was like you know what I'm a I'm a figure this out and obviously it's not as easy like I'm not as naive anymore as I was when I was 18 maybe one day I can try and contribute a little bit you went on and used your science background and ended up working in a lab to start off with COVID what was that like 
It was super cool. Like I like loved working there. Um, I mean, I just like worked like in general vaccine development, not like specifically like invented a vaccine for COVID or something. Like, please don't, don't, don't cut this together. So this does sound like this now. Like I really, like it's not. Um, it was great getting a feeling for what like life really looks like when you actually commit to this cause. And um, as much as I loved and enjoyed it, I also realized that I'm not ready for it yet. Like I still enjoy things that like athletes do and travel the world and not really work a nine to five that actually ends up being like a 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then you go home and you're just like mentally so tired because you just like did numbers all day. Since I started a semester later in school, I also graduated a semester later, mm -hmm. but I lost my eligibility already in May. Luckily, the LET actually postponed the Q school into January, so that worked really, really well for me. It was like really not great golf uh, that week. I came up actually a shot short where like I was tied for like the better category and I was like in a playoff and I didn't really do well in playoff. In Cape Town in the first week of 21, which was super late, like late May, I finished Second. second so then suddenly i was into everything like i could just pick and choose i even played both majors that year i was like oh man now i'm like running into different problems because suddenly i have so many opportunities to play and i think a lot of people probably struggle with that for like a while trying to find the balance like how many weeks in a row can you do and that obviously varies with the kind of travel you got going on Having Alex on the back is a really good thing. He like keeps me in check. Cause for me personally, I have to get it out. Like when I hit a bad shot, I can't just swallow it. I have to just make like a sarcastic comment or something. The thing I love most about Alex in that scenario is he just says absolutely nothing. He doesn't even like breathe in a different tone. Then it's just like, he knows, okay, I have to get it out. And then we talk about whatever, the recent Netflix show we watch or Formula One or whatever. It, it may be just something that's like completely unrelated. And then we focus on the next shot afterwards and try and make the most of it. So that's been a good process for me. I just like to see how far I can take it. I would love to get as close as I can possibly get to my full potential. Once I feel like that desire, the passion to get better kind of like slows down a little bit. I would like to maybe set the course of my life towards a different area I'm passionate about. And I'm sure there'll still be plenty of diseases left to cure. One of my like, I guess, idols of other sports, I guess, Lewis Hamilton. As an athlete, the way he approaches things, the way he tries to take what he has and like just apply it the best possible in that moment. And I really like that mindset. I have a little like LH44 on my golf ball to like remind myself. Um, well, LH are also my own initials, so it's not too obvious how much of a fangirl I am. <laughs> Bonding with like athletes from different sports has been such a cool experience. Like I have good friends that are uh, badminton Olympians for Germany. Um, and they've taught me a lot about like being on the road, being competitive in any sport is all about performing under pressure because we're so much in the golf bubble and then like it just all feels a little repetitive because everyone's kind of more or less doing the same. Uh, but if you take something from a different sport, it just, like, gives you a different angle at stuff and you maybe reflect one or two things you do a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And that's helped me a lot.